I'm Chad. I'm Dad. No, wait a minute, I'm supposed to be Dad first. Oh yeah. You're Dad. I'm Dad. I'm Chad. And this is our channel. All right guys, this is gonna be a tool video. This is gonna be pretty much everything you're gonna to need to build this airplane, the RANS S21. So I'll go over the list and kind of explain what some of these things do. The first thing they call for is pliers, which you guys know what those are. Needle nose pliers, side cutters. I've got some of those over in the toolbox, but I don't think I've used anything other than these shears. And those will come, those are a good set of shears. Uh, that's the name of them. Those come in the RANS toolkit. So, hammer. I've got a few different ball peen hammers and some rubber mallets. You guys know what those are. Center punch. This is a spring loaded. So, whenever you are wanting to, say, for instance, in a piece of metal and you want to get your drill bit started, you'll center punch with that. And it has a spring in it. So, when you push down, it'll pop a little dent, a little indention in, in the metal. I'll do it in this ruler. So here we go. Real small right there. And what that does, it keeps your, and sometimes I'll do it a few times, keeps your drill bit straight when you get started with your drill bit. It keeps it from walking. Uh, screwdriver set small clamps so these are our clamps over here and we've got an assortment i would recommend getting craftsman or maybe something maybe even higher than craftsman these from harbor freight are terrible they don't they don't work too well but they work so there's our Clamps, let's see, socket set SAE and metric, uh, two or four foot level, you guys know what that is. Hole saw, now on the hole saw, I haven't used one, I used a, um, I used a punch, and it's like what the electricians use, it's a knockout, and those work really well. Home Depot has them, I borrowed one from an ele electrician friend of mine, and I actually did the hole for, I got this door, let's see, open this door up. I did the, the holes right there for the heater and then the holes for the throttle and mixture to run through. And they work very well. I would recommend them over a hole saw any day. Cut a nice clean hole. Um, let's see, next they've got a hacksaw. I don't think I've used that once. Edge forming tool, that comes in the kit from Rands. And basically it's like a pair of uh, vice grips with these rollers on the end and that puts that slight edge on, Let's see if I can find it here. So it'll put this edge on metal, aluminum. So whenever it wraps over another piece, it fits up flush. Uh, practice on that before you get on your real metal because it will walk on you and mess the metal up. So practice with that guy before you start using it on the real stuff. Files, I've got a set of files over in the toolbox and yes, you will use files. Step drill, I call these my Rambo bits. You will use these. So this one's junk, I ordered it off Amazon. It's total garbage. These made in the USA. And I think I got these at uh, Home Depot. Got a set of three. Irwin, I think, is what the manufacturer, I remember correctly. Pop grip dimpler. So this is for eighth inch holes. And basically, this is to be used with this guy. And it puts a dimple and metal so that you can use... Uh, flush rivets So I would recommend a, a hand squeezer with dimple dies. It's more expensive But the throat is maybe four inches or so. So if you have anything over I don't have it here. I borrowed it from a friend and uh, Eric and I took it back, but it allows you to dimple the metal and it's, it's way better than using a pop grip dimpler 
but if it's over four inches from the edge, say you had a hole, I don't know, just say this was five inches away from either side, you wouldn't be able to get the hand squeezer, so you'd have to use the pop grip dimpler. So that's what that guy's for. And basically it's just a nail. So you'll take it off a part like this, slide this through the hole, put this other end on. It's kind of hard to do with one hand. And then use your rivet squeezer and just give it a little tug from the top and it'll put your, your dimple in. Clico pliers, oh my gosh, we've got two pair of these. Have threatened to weld a chain to them so that they will, like a wallet, chain down from our belt loop because for some reason they always disappear. I think the other set's over there. But it's amazing how fast those guys disappear. So we've got, we've got two of those. One comes in the set from Rands and then the other one we bought off the internet. Clicos, Clicos, where's the Clico? There's the Clicos. So those come in the set from Rands, uh, the copper, and those are for eighth inch holes. And there is these guys for number 40. And then there's a bigger one. I can't remember what size, maybe number 11, but we hardly ever use those, but you will need them. So there's three different sizes. Safety wire pliers, we'll need these guys. And I bought this, I bought this guy used. And so that's safety wire pliers and allows you to put the, to put the safety wire on and turn it. So that's what that is. Let's see. What else do we have here? Linesman pliers. I don't know if I've used those or not yet. I've got them. Basically, these are linesman pliers, but I don't even think I've used those yet. Let's see. What's next? Click punch. I think that's what I told you about earlier. Center punch. I've got some center punches in there, but a click punch is this guy right here. Then a center punch would be basically the same thing, but without the spring inside of it, you'd have to tap it with a, with a hammer. Ball peen hammer right there. Drift pin and punch set. These guys, um, these are very helpful in removing rivets and then lining up holes. Let's see. Safety glasses. I've actually got some on. This knows what those are. Wrench set, SA and metric. You know what those are, you can buy those anywhere. Ruler and tape measure. This guy was new when we started. So you can see how much we've used that. So for drawing straight lines, measuring. Say tape, we've used tape measure as well. String, we've used string. I don't think that's listed here. Utility knife, you guys know what that is. Digital protractor, I haven't used this guy yet. I think it's used on the wings, but that's a digital protractor right there. These are fluting pliers, and those come in the kit from Rands. Those are used to straighten out ribs in the wings and some other things um, that when they're pieces of metal, when they're punched out, they are bent. From the, from the factory, and so you use those on the edges, on the flanges, and you just take a little bite, and as you're doing that, it starts to straighten that rib back out, and that's what the fluting pliers are used for. scotch Bright pads, I've actually used this guy, and that's just a cheapie from Home Depot. It's a die grinder, and then I just buy the cheap uh, pads off the internet right here. And it's very good for deburring holes um, on metal that's going to be painted or not seen. Very, very good way to, to deburr. Scotch Bright, yeah, just went over that. Uh, the uni bit, I think that's the same thing as a step bit, which I call a Rambo bits. Uh, dimple dies, I went over that. Hand squeezer, went over that. I actually borrowed that from Eric and 
that will allow you to squeeze um, uh, rivets that are solid rivets and also allows you to dimple uh, with the uh, dimple dies. Uh, Clicos, I went over that. Silver, yeah, that was right. Gold's number 11 uh, bit size. Silver is number 40 and copper is number 30. Bench, disc, sander. That's this guy over there. Just a cheapie from Home Depot and that is used a lot. Let's see, heat gun. I've got one. I don't know if I've used it or not yet. Right angle drill and drill bits that you will use in tight spaces and then drill bits. And I've also got a drill doctor over there and that sharpens your bits so you don't have to go buy new ones unless you break them. But when they get dull, you can use that and sharpen your bits. Uh, let's see, bandsaw. I do not have one of those. It would have been nice whenever you have to cut tubing to make bushings. They'll give you a piece of tubing and tell you to make bushings out of it. And I use a cutoff wheel to cut these. It's not the right way to do it. And then I would go and see how it puts an angle on them. And I would take it over here and get them straight with this. And they get really hot. So if I had a, a um, bandsaw, that would have been nice. But also Home Depot and Lowe's sell those bushings already pre-cut. So I'd gone over there a lot and just bought them pre-cut pretty cheap drill press yes there's my drill press don't have to have one as big and fancy but that is used a lot and the vise is used a lot so you could probably get away without a drill press but it makes drilling some of the holes like in the wings for the flap oh uh, there's bushings that go in the flap hinges and it makes drilling those out perfectly square so those bushings fit in the way they're supposed to. And if you get them in there crooked, or if you waller the hole out with a drill, hand drill, they won't fit right. So I do recommend getting a drill press. You can get them cheap at Harbor Freight. You don't have to have an expensive one. Use the bench grinder. I don't know what I've used that on. Maybe it wasn't for the airplane, but I bought that at a, at a yard sale. And then uh, vice, I think this is a five or six inch vice from Home Depot. And then that is your rivet gun. And if I, that came in the kit from Rands, if I had it to do over, I would not have gone with that. I would have gone with the electric. If your air compressor goes down, you don't have it. It's, I've gone through about three of these leader hoses because they, they break, they're cheap. But anyway, I would have gone with an electric like Milwaukee instead of that. So, Let's see, what else do we have? Soldering gun. We've got uh, a Weller setup over there. There's my soldering iron setup. And that's adjustable. So you can adjust the heat range to solder thicker wires. I've got some drill bits up to, I think, an inch over there. I don't think you need those. I've used one of them for the fuel tanks because the step bit it said to use a step bit my Rambo bit and the fuel tank was actually thicker than that step bit so it didn't go all the way because the tank was thicker so I used um, it was a seven I don't remember what size it was but I used one of those bigger bits over there uh, let's see what else bandsaw we went over that I don't know what an mp3 player is for CD player, I have no idea. Maybe somebody can tell me in the comments. Electric hand drill, we've got two of these. And then impacts, tightening some of the bolts. We use impacts just to get them started. And maybe we use impacts, I can't remember. Maybe I'll cut that out. Anyway, drills, hand drills, electric uh, with a battery. Okay, so let me go over everything else that I use a lot. That's basically what Rand says you need, well, they do say you, you do need this one inch diameter wood dowel, but that's not really a tool. You'll use that whenever you drill your holes for your sight gauges on your, your uh, fuel tanks. Counter sinks, well, I'll, I'll go over that here in a second. Okay, so we went over this, the uh, 
the punch, Clico pliers. This is a digital caliper. You will use this a lot. This is inexpensive. Um, I've had this for years. They're probably 15, 20 bucks on the internet, but they're very nice. Turn it on, zero it out, and then you can, so then you can actually set it. That is very hard to use. Let me set this camera down. Very hard to use with one hand. So say you want to set a quarter of an inch. There's a quarter of an inch, lock it down. And then now you have a quarter of an inch, you'll use that. Thanks for watching another episode of Dad and Chad. If you like this video, share it with your friends and give us a thumbs up. And never miss an episode of Dad and Chad by hitting that subscribe button. Because we'll be back next Tuesday with another episode. Thanks again for watching Dad and Chad.